Hello everyone, good afternoon. I'm Jess and I'll be showing you a very practical demonstration of the FFmpeg capabilities. Um, essentially we'll be mostly using the CLI commands, FFmpeg and FFprobe. Um, this guide is meant to demonstrate the various manipulations you can do with media using your own shell and comfortably off. Of course, these can be automated into scripts. And without further ado, let's begin. So, as we know, FFmpeg is an amazing FOSS project. It's cross-platform and written in C, so it can be run on Unix, can be run on Mac, on Windows, and probably other systems that are non none of the above, if such exist and are popular. Um, I'll be showing you some practical examples, as I've said. So we'll extract metadata from media assets. Oh, right, my phone. Sorry about that. Hold on. One keeps forgetting. There we go. Cheers. So we'll, we'll see how to extract metadata from media files. We'll see how to convert between different media types. Uh, we'll live stream the screen display of my X server via RTMP onto a remote server. If important, uh, look at this note, I'll be reading it to you. Incorporate several optional parts and optimizations that are covered under different licenses, mainly GPL. So, when you want to utilize FFmpeg in your own project, you have to consider distribution. Okay, uh, and there's an appendix with a legal document explaining exactly what you can't and can do with FFmpeg when linking your, into your own project. Okay, so, very good to use, good license, but keep that in mind don't want to have any troubles or be disrespectful for all the other projects. Cheers. Um, in regards to installation, so FFmpeg can be compiled by hand, naturally. Um, most Linux distributions include prepackaged binaries for FFmpeg. Once again, because FFmpeg supports multiple uh, extensions and options, not all uh, distributions will have the build that you need for your applications or uses. So if you do have something that's pre-compiled and tested and available, great. You are Um, metadata and so forth. If our application accepts multiple sources of media uh, transcoded or created by various uh, utilities and software, can be uh, professional studio editing grade software, could be uh, FFmpeg being used to produce a screen display, could be um, very with, right? Uh, your media may be an audio file, maybe video, different codecs, may, might be an image even. Uh, so if you've got a video platform that accepts input of media files from the users, your first step would be to understand what you're dealing with. Uh, FFprobe could be used for that, and I'll show you exactly how. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll enlarge it. Hold on. Can you see okay? Better. So a bit more then. This is all right? Good. All right. So our first example, detecting the media properties using FFprobe. FFprobe, 
for bros, short format, show streams, and my asset file. In this case, called November Spinner 2. That's my cat. Okay, so what have we here? First of all, you'll see we've got several streams. So that's the first one, index zero. The codec name is H264. You can see the long codec name too. webcam. You can see the width, the height, and various other aspects which we can't go through at the moment due to lack of time. Then we've got another stream, and that's indexed one over here. Can everyone see okay? Yeah. Good, cool. And that's the audio stream, right? So AAC, advanced <coughs> audio coding, and different aspects, including duration, by the way, and bitrate, and so forth. So that's quite handy when you want to know what sort of media you're dealing with. Okay, you can see another example, I think. Oh, let's take a Married with Children video I've got. It was a great city. And get the idea. Now, this format is quite convenient and you can parse it automatically using scripts or your own software uh, to determine what we're dealing with when we get the input. Good. Take a media file and extract a portion of it and just the audio track of it. Okay, why is that handy? Once again, sometimes you don't need the video, you just need the audio. Uh, you're podcasting, for example, and uh, people would listen to it and there's no need for video. You'd want to extract just the audio track from the video, from the media asset. Uh, and also, of course, uh, just to make our example a bit more interesting, we'll start at uh, a certain point in time within the video duration and end at a different time. The efficient of three parse these commands, so I won't have to type them through. And we'll manipulate the big buck mov, which has become quite popular. So oh, let me we have sound. Very nice. Um, now, let's run a fifth probe on it, just so we'll understand what we've got. Okay, big bunny, mob. All right, and two tracks, one for video, one for audio. Let's get the audio. First up where it works. Alright. Okay. We've outputted to Big Bunny, oh I'm sorry, Big Buck MP3. Let's play that. Portrait. <laughs> and we'll output to temp out mp3 all right let's check 
check it out. Looks better. And let's play it. But then again, looks on everything. <laughs> they really aren't. <laughs> Worked out better than I thought, actually. Well done. What have we? Let me just um, explain the flags. So, minus SS, the starting timestamp. The scale uh, minus QA is an alias for this, for Q scale A. Map A designates the audio input uh, streams as the source for the output file. And the quality uh, is, in the case of, well, it's, uh, it's encoder specific. We're using LAME, uh, and there's an appendix explaining that too, uh, so you can browse it at your own convenience um, when you're short in time, so once again. All right, next example. Embed subtitles onto a video. So, I've prepared this. Nov CRT, which is quite simple and small. Let's look at our original video. This is my cat spinning the spinner. All right, good for us. You see there is no subtitles. Close that. Run our little command. Once again, input video file, my MP4, my input SRT, the uh, subtitles file, copy, move text, output file. Quite simple. Yes. All right. Ignore the errors, the warnings. I promise it will work. I've tested it myself. Let me enable the subtitles. I think she spoke enough for now. Okay, another example. Uh, FFmpeg is also good for manipulating uh, caption files and formats. So let's take our, our SRT and transform it into ass, which is the best name ever. So argument, the input file, no SRT, and then output file, horse's ass. Horse's ass. It's fun to say too. Let's open the file up. All right. So just to remind you, here's our original. Okay. Okay, so original, ass, ass, original. There we go. I love cursing, and it's the only way I can do it. All right, next up. We can take this one and embed dot. There's and a request for bigger fonts. Bigger fonts, sorry, go on. Is that all right? A bit better. And now? Nice. A big ass. Say perfect. Come on, give me something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up. We'll be taking our source video again, uh, the November Spinner 2, the ass file we've created, and we'll combine these into out MKV. Sounds ambitious, doesn't it? See what we've done. Mm. 
Now you see she's rotated too. We can fix that too if we have time. It's quite easy to do. And let's show the captions. <laughs> she knows Hebrew too. Isn't she the best there is? All right, enough about you. Next up, or have we? Okay. Now this is kind of cool too. So I'm using Linux, and I'll be streaming my X display to an RTMP server, and then we'll see the playback too. It's quite nice. It's a different player there. So look at what's happening here. I'm streaming my screen display, and then we're viewing the stream over HTTP. So this is this is showing exactly what I've done a second ago. These are the parameters that I've been using for this little sticky thing. Uh, so, minus i and my screen display for x, that's the equivalent of the, you can see it's running, the display env param. Okay, so, column zero. <coughs> Next up, we've got the, we're using the x11 grab. So grab the X11 display with FFmpeg. <coughs> then we've got the frame size. Then we've got uh, the transcoding uh, codec to use, so H264, and the pixel format. Simple enough, right? And like I said, these can be automated quite easily. So for example, if you want to stream in the loop, and you don't want to supervise it manually, because there are plenty of tools using FFmpeg 2. One of them that I like especially, even though CLI is my favorite thing in the world, but there is the OBS project. And that's entirely FOSS 2. Very nice studio using FFmpeg. So when you want to do things manually, you wouldn't necessarily opt to use the command line. I would, but not everyone would. But when you want to automate things, like imagine you want to extract the audio track from 50,000 entries, right? Imagine you need to do that daily. You don't want to do that manually. So FMPIC CLI, the best option you've got. All right. If you need something that's uh, GUI-wise and uh, manual, OBS Studio, very nice choice. I can show it to you. They deserve some credit too. I said I can show it to them. There we go. All right, so nice GUI. You can start streaming, start recording, and so forth. It's not what our session is about, but it's, it's a very nice product. Close this for now. OK, seeing how we do have some time, I'll try show you some examples of C code with FFmpeg. I think I've got something prepared. Let's take a look at one of those real quick. Um, how about audio video reading C. So we can't go through the entire code, but this is vanilla code from a FMPEG. Uh, I'll show you the end results though. Let's compile it on make. Nice, permission denied, hold on.
bear with me. So need the include path. Oh well, never mind. Um, it works, generally speaking. <laughs> we can debug it now. I mean, we've got 10 minutes, but um, it might be boring for you. At any rate, um, whenever you download a FEMPEG, you've got these examples, and um, you can use them quite easily. The make file is not that complex either. Essentially, what's going on here is that um, I've got several, I've got multiple versions of FEMPEG, headers, libraries, and so forth on my compiled uh, version of this which I've created earlier. Um, AVI or written path to an inf input. mini implementation of ffprobe uh, in our code or rather ffmpex example code and you can use the same general principle and follow the examples to use a fmpeg in your c application of course um, there are several bindings to various languages uh, so if you're working with a higher level language such as i don't know an interpreter language like python or php or whatnot you, it, it's quite possible you've got bindings for your own language. So you don't have to necessarily write in C or use the command line uh, utilities. You may also interface with that via the um, model that binds the FFmpeg API for your pref preferred language. Okay? Well, that's how we. Uh, I think I'm pretty much. of the FFMP capabilities, but yes, I could do that uh, with lossless. Uh, like flock or something, or... You Documentation is divided into segments, so command line tools, components, libraries, if you are meant to link your application directly with the FFmpeg libraries, um, API documentation, and so forth. And there are a lot of practical examples too, so it shouldn't be hard for you to find whatever you need to find. The man page, as with everything that's as complex as FFmpeg is, is a bit hard to navigate through sometimes, but Google's your friend, and usually, you know, by feeling very lucky, you'll find the exact command you need without any, any effort at all. Okay, thank you. Cheers.
Can, can you say something about how important it is to compile FFmpeg? Performance. Um, it might might uh, think about though is that because of FFmpeg links against various libraries and projects, uh, just to name the one, let's uh, talk about uh, H26, right? That's a library. Uh, if you need FT. transcoding engine. I've spoken about that a bit this morning. I don't know if you attended or not. Such is life. Um, but you can see that there are quite a few dependencies. Right, so we use STL, we use FreeType, we use Zlib, of course, Schrodinger, Libfiora. I'm not going to go through the entire list, but you understand. So the build is a bit complex. Uh, if you could do with what's shipped from your distribution, you should try that first. Uh, granted, there, is, there are certain optimizations you can do by compiling on your own machine, but you need to know what you're doing. Uh, I, I'm not saying you don't, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying you really need to know. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's not worth your trouble and it might damage and do more damage than good. Right. The reason I'm asking is because I have noticed that FFmpeg is very good at using stuff like AVX instructions on modern Intel processors and stuff like that. Right. And you may really get two or three times speed up just by compiling yes, properly. Yes, in, in, indeed. But anyways, I mean, if you're using, um, just saying, Debian, for example, that's my distribution, right? Then somebody compiled it for you on a similar architecture. It's, it's going to be Intel anyways, or AMD. Uh, it might not be your exact architecture, but it'll, it'll probably be close enough as to not make such substantial difference uh, unless, you know, under certain situations, I suppose. Uh, and besides, with transcoding, uh, whilst speed is important, it's... Okay, last question. Uh, you talked about uh, using PHP with FMPEG. Uh, uh, can you tell us about some um, case studies like uh, web application using FFmpeg for video manipulation audio or something? Yes. Uh, our platform, the Cultura Video open source platform, uses FFmpeg for uh, what we call the Cultura decision layer. So our entire server side is in PHP, okay? And we accept input files of various formats. We analyze them. Uh, their metadata, and then we determine the best flavors to transcode that entry to. Uh, by flavors, I mean that, for example, if your source, let's say you've uh, used a very professional studio editing grade uh, software to edit your video, it's very high bitrate, it looks amazing on your very it uh, with that uh, high bitrate and fancy codec that's meant for editing and so forth, uh, they'll mostly see the buffering thingy moving about and get all excited and jittery. So you want to transcode it to lower level bitrates. And even then, you also have to consider your uh, network conditions, right? So if your bandwidth is good, you'd want a higher bitrate. If it's really shitty, you'd rather have a lower one but a continuous playback, as opposed to buffering, played a second, buffered, played. People get a bit impatient, you know. Uh, so Kultura uses, uh, like I said, the server side is entirely in PHP, and we use, P we use a fan peg to analyze the sources, then determine the best commands to transcode the video with, uh, and we can dynamically define different flavor sets 
uh, this is handy because the needs may vary from one outfit to another. For example, if you're a corporate America company and you know that your videos are how-tos that are related solely to work and your users would not watch them from home using their tablets or mobile phones, you may opt not to transcode Uh, network quality um, connections, then you'd like to transcode to multiple flavors and using the ABR, the adaptive bitrate algorithms, serve your users depending on their con network conditions and device. Uh, and you can do that in, in, in our code, we don't use a PHP extension for that, even though last I checked there was such an extension for FMPEG. So, uh, PHP extensions, if anyone uh, wants to know, are written in C usually, although they can be written in C++. Uh, this, the PHP engine is written in C. And I reckon there is an FMPEG extension for uh, PHP, but we don't use that, so we just build a command line, various arguments we need, depending on the source media and the flavors uh, profile and so forth, and we exact FFmpeg CLI. Uh, you could do the same or else you could, do, you could use the extension. I wonder how stable it is, I, I really don't know. Thank you, Jess. <coughs>